welcome back to the crypts, tombs, tunnels, and temples, everyone. I hope you're ready to wade into the watery depths or fight your way through a jungle because it's the only way we can find the top 10 lost ancient cities you won't believe exist. I want to do a solid mix between lost cities that were found and those that have yet to be found. So we're going to start with the incredibly fascinating Atlantis of Sand. For those who may not know the story, in the Quran, Iram of the Pillars was said to be a very bougie and luxurious place, populated by a group of people known as the Ad, who in the story had turned their backs on Allah and so the Prophet Hud was sent to summon them to return to the worship of Allah and obey him. But the people of Iram weren't about it, reacting with hostility to the kind Prophet. As a result, legend says the people of Ad were punished. Allah sent a sandstorm against their city for seven nights and days to bury it alive. Fast forward and it's the rockin' and rollin' headbang in 1990s and a team led by Nicholas Clapp, who's an amateur archaeologist and a filmmaker, announced they'd found the ancient city of Ubar, also known as Iran. This identification was achieved using NASA's remote sensing satellites, ground penetrating radar, and Landsat program data, and images taken by the space shuttle Challenger. These resources allowed the team to identify old camel trade routes to the point at which they converged. One of the points of convergence was a well-known waterhole at Sher Oman. When the excavation was carried out at the site, a large octagonal fort was found with high walls and tall towers. While doubt still remains as to whether Ubar and Iram are really one and the same, it has been suggested at the very least the story of Iram was inspired by the city of Ubar and over time became altered to incorporate the message of Allah's teachings. What do you think? I think we started pretty strong. Let's give the sunken stele city some attention. Specifically a sunken stele that belonged to the lost city of Heracleion. Plunged into the Mediterranean Sea off of the coast of Egypt, this monumental city once held Cleopatra's inauguration temple before sinking nearly a millennia ago. For centuries the city was believed to be a myth, much like the city of Atlantis is viewed today. Brief pause just to repeat what I said. Heracleion was also believed to be a myth like Atlantis and it was still mentioned in documents and maps just like Atlantis. So I'm not confirming Atlantis is real and out there or anything, but it probably is. Moving on, in 2001, an underwater archaeologist searching for French warships stumbled across the sunken city. After removing some layers of sand, sediment, and mud, divers could begin to uncover the extraordinarily well-preserved city, with many of its treasures still intact, such as the main temple of Amangerb, giant statues of pharaohs, hundreds of smaller statues of gods and goddesses, a sphinx, 64 ancient ships, 700 anchors, stone blocks with both Greek and ancient Egyptian inscriptions, dozens of sarcophagi, gold coins, and weights made from bronze and stones. Around these pieces lay other smaller treasures. So that's things like shards of pottery, precious jewelry, coins, oil lamps, hell, even fruit baskets. It was one of the most significant underwater discoveries in over a decade and continues to be fruitful to this day. For example, a sunken stele was pulled out of the water just this last year. This next lost city is kind of named like an Indiana Jones themed ride at Disneyland would be named. Next is the lost city of Atlan. You hear that too, right? Anyways, the Aztec, aka Mexica people of Mexico, created one of the most powerful empires in the ancient Americas. While we know and can still learn quite a bit from their empire located where today's Mexico City is found, less is known about the very start of the Mexicas. They weren't originally from where their empire lay. Many considered the missing island of Atlan to be the first or secondary ancient homeland where the Mexica people began to form a civilization prior to their migration to the Valley of Mexico. And they left the evidence themselves. According to Nohatl legends, there were seven clans that once lived in Chicomostoc, the place of seven caves. Being of similar linguistic and cultural groups, the seven clans left their respective caves and settled as one group together on Atlan. The word Atlan means the land to the north, the land from whence we, the Aztecs, came. Then the Mexica migration from Atlan to Teohitwan is documented to have happened on the first ever Mexica solar year, May 24th of 1064. To this day, the actual existence of an island known as Atlan has not been confirmed. Searches have spanned from western Mexico all the way to the deserts of Utah in hopes of finding the legendary island. Meanwhile, deep in the jungle, explorers have discovered the White City. Boredom, money, and legends. Shake, poor, serve to rich people. If we want to find anything archaeology-wise nowadays, with limited government funding, this really 
really is the only way. And it was this particular cocktail that helped us determine in 2018 that the local legends of a lost ancient white city in, in the Honduras were true. The legends were passed around for centuries. Hernan Cortez may have started it. He had heard trustworthy information about the ancient ruins, but never located them. Then in 1927, a pilot named Charles Linderberg reported seeing monuments constructed from white stone while flying over the eastern Honduras. In 1939, traveler Theodore Mord claimed to have found it and brought thousands of stolen artifacts back to the United States to prove it. He spoke of a giant statue of a monkey god buried in the ground there. He never revealed the precise location as he wanted to keep the glory to himself, and then the idiot died before ever returning to the site for proper excavation. In 1952, an explorer named Tibor Sagjalki searched for the White City on an expedition financed by the Ministry of Culture of the Honduras and still returned empty handed. Explorers never gave up, and it took till 2012 to find traces of it, and in 2018, aerial photos captured the city from above for the first time. Early 2020 was when the ground investigation was sent in, and the dramatic truth was confirmed. It's La Ciudad Blanca, aka the Lost City of the Monkey God. This Arthurian legend remains lost to this day, if it ever existed. The Lost Leonese. While Leonese was mostly referred to in legend and myth, such as the story of Tristan and Isolet, there is some belief that it represents a very real city that sunk into the sea many years ago. Prior to its sinking, Lyoness would have been a booming empire, containing 140 villages and churches when it's said to have disappeared on November 11th of 1099, although some stories say the year was 1089. Very suddenly, water surged up and villages, people, and animals were swallowed whole, never to reemerge. While the Arthurian tales are very overblown and legendary, it is believed that Lyonesse was once a very real place attached to the Skilly Isles in Cornwall, England. Evidence shows that the sea levels were considerably lower there in the past, so it's very possible an area that once contained human settlement above ground is now beneath the sea level. I mean, think of LA and Venice. That is going to happen to them. Fishermen near Skilly Isles often tell tales of retrieving pieces of building and other structures from their fishing nets, but nothing artifacty just yet. Lost and found, Pyramid City of Caral is next. The Norte Chico civilization of Sub Peru were one of the first known civilizations in America. Their capital was the sacred city of Caral, a 5,000 year old metropolis complete with complex agricultural practices, rich culture, and monumental architecture in an unusual ancient human way. Six large pyramid structures, stone and earthen platform mounds, temples, amphitheaters, sunken circular plazas, and a residential area. The ancient city of Caral had laid buried beneath sand for thousands of years until the Soup Valley was surveyed in 1905 by the German archaeologist Max Uhl, who picked up on the first archaeological clues in the area. In the 1970s, archaeologists finally began excavating and discovered that the hills originally identified as natural formations were actually steppe pyramids. And then by the 1990s, the full extent of the great city of Caral had emerged. The public architecture has stairs, rooms, courtyards, an amphitheater, and three large sunken plazas with six large steppe pyramids arranged as their frame. Accommodation seems to have consisted of large rooms atop the pyramids for the elite, ground level complexes for craftsmen, and small outlying dwellings for the workers. In total, it's estimated that Caral was home to a population of around 3,000 mystery people we're still learning about. The jungles really hide some of the biggest secrets, don't they? In this case, it's two Maya cities. In 2014, archaeologists made an amazing discovery in the jungles of Mexico. Two ancient Maya cities that have been lost over time. Actually, record scratch that one. Okay, so one of these two cities had already been found long before, Lagunita, but the dummies didn't map it properly and they couldn't relocate it after leaving. This was the city explorers and researchers were hoping to find again. And instead, they got a two for one deal as they found Lagunita and a city they'd never known about. One of the most impressive features of the Maya city Lagunita is an enormous yawning monster mouth as an entryway, which represents the Maya earth deity of fertility. Beyond the carnival-like entrance, there are large pyramids and the ruins of a palace complex arranged around four larger plazas. Nearby, they found numerous stone sculptures and several altars, all engraved with well-preserved reliefs and inscriptions. Even more stunning than the rediscovery of Lagunita was the fact the researchers stumbled across that second set of ruins, which were previously unknown and include a pyramid temple, altar, and a large acropolis surrounded by three temples. The researchers named the city Tam Shen, aka Deep Well, after finding more than 30 chultons, deep underground chambers used for collecting rainwater. Let's hear it for the holy city. Next is the temple 
capital of the city, Mosier. Chances are you haven't heard of this kingdom. It was from the times of the Iron Age, centered on Lake Van in the Armenian highlands, which extends out across what is now Turkey, Iran, Iraq, and Armenia. The temple was built on the holy site of Ararat in 825 BC, and after Mosier fell to the Assyrians in the 8th century BC, the ancient temple became lost to the pages of history. Ancient inscriptions referred to Mosier as a holy city founded in bedrock and the city of the raven, while the name Mosier means exit of the serpent. A depiction of the temple appears in the Assyrian bas relief that adorned the palace of King Sargon II at Korsapat, and to commemorate his victory over the seven kings of Ararat in 714 BC. It took endless studies, endless exhibitions, and excavations and near misses. Then finally, in July of 2014, they hit the proverbial gold. The long lost temple Musasir had been located in the Kurdistan region of northern Iraq. Findings included life size human sculptures and columns based from a temple dedicated to the god Haldi, all dating back to the period in which the temple of Musasir was built. This next city is another that took it to the seas, Haliki. When it was on the ground, however, Haliki was situated in that Shia, which is near the northwestern part of the Peponesian Peninsula. It was the leader of the Achean League, a confederation of 12 surrounding cities that traded and governed as a network. This made Haliki an important and economical, cultural, and religious centers. Ironically, their patron god was Poseidon, you know, the one who wraps earthquakes in the ocean. And Haliki was in one of the most active earthquake zones in Europe, which coincidentally is also what murked them. Maybe they should have chose a patron god that was a little less good at delivering on his duties. Well, one night during the winter of 373 BC, the city of Haliki was obliterated. Leading up to this day, there had been some signs the city's impending natural disaster in documentation, such as immense columns of flames and the mass migration of animals from the coast to the mountains several days prior. A major earthquake followed by a large tsunami from the Gulf of Corinth wiped the city of Haliki from the face of the earth. The neighboring 12 communities rushed to send rescue parties the following morning, but there's no survivors to be found. In the early 19th century, speculations about the actual site of Haliki began to spread. However, it was not until 2001 that the ancient city was finally unearthed in Achia, Greece. In 2012, the destruction layer was uncovered and confirmed for sure that it was Haliki and excavations can continue. And to top everything off, we'll be heading into the Cambodian jungle. In 2014, Damien Evans, director of the University of Sydney's Archaeological Research Centre in Cambodia, and a team working in the Siem Reap region were given approval to use the LIDAR laser technology in remote jungles of Cambodia for the first time. First time that the airborne technology had been used for archaeological research in tropical Asia. One and done, they immediately find something. A 1200 year old lost city that predates Angkor Wat temple complex and community. With this instrument, bang, all of a sudden we saw an immediate picture of an entire city that no one knew existed, which is just remarkable, said Evans. The lost city is Mahantrapavarta, where people lived on a mountain called Phnom Kulen, 350 years before building the famous Angkor Wat temple complex in northwestern Cambodia. It was part of the Hindu Buddhist Khmer Empire that ruled much of Southeast Asia from around 800 to 1400 AD. And decades of groundwork had narrowed its location to this region. Using the LIDAR data, the team of archaeologists discovered the ruins of five previously unrecorded temples, a huge statue of a Buddha, evidence of ancient canals and roads, and hundreds of mysterious mounds spread across the city, probably tombs where the dead were buried. They also found a cave with historically significant carvings that were used by the holy hermits, who were common during the Angkor period. The research and excavation into the remarkable discovery is still in, in its infancy, and it's unknown what more archaeologists will find. One more thing. The ancient city was never really lost, as indigenous Cambodians have been making the religious pilgrimage to the site for hundreds of years. They just didn't feel like sharing the information with the outside until it was found by others. Hilarious. Alrighty, we've hit the end of another video. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more from us. And until next time, feel free to start debates in the comment section about which of these still lost cities are really legends and which are real.